50 years ago. We finally went to the moon. For the first time, we look back at our planet. The human population since then more than doubled. This series celebrates natural wonders remaining and reveal what to preserve. To make people and nature thrive, when human beings are built first settlements 10,000 years ago around the world on land and at sea. was full of life. This stable Eden for generations. It nurtured our increasing civilizations. Now however, in space. Of only one human life. Everything that has changed. Over the past 50 years, on average, wildlife populations have 60% decreased. In human history, for the first time, natural stability can't be taken for granted anymore. But the world of nature is resilient. Great wealth remains. And the planet can recover with our help. It was never more important to understand the workings of the natural world. and how to help. Fauna is still flourishing in amazing numbers in a few valuable places. Along South America's Peruvian coast, seabirds gather. Millions strong in colonies. They're coming to breed here. Every morning, the birds leave their settlements fishing in one of the richest sea. It's an incredible daily migration of five million birds. The huge flocks of boobies and cormorants. They're all looking for one thing. Anchovies. The booby bombs the shoals. More and more oaks. Join the frenzy of feeding. Everything in this huge assembly is here because a mighty oceanic current, the Humboldt, the the Antarctic sweeps up, bring rich nutrients with it. From the depths of the ocean, 90% of the ocean life is in the shallow seas, close to coast, leaving the land. The seas, most of them, blue desert, But even these remote waters can be enhanced through a most unexpected link to the land. A few deserts, hundreds of kilometers often, from the sea, provide life with raw materials. Winds sweep up every year, 2 billion tons of heavenly dust, at least a quarter, eventually the sea falls. Supply of nutrients, microscopic organisms required. 
These are the foundations of life in the ocean. Dolphins are exploring the vast open sea in search of wealth. It could have nourished distant deserts. A mackerel shoal. He discovered a krill swarm. Little crustaceans. Feed on the ocean. Microscopic floating plants. But the jigsaw itself. For the dolphins, their food. They drive the goblet. To the surface. And into the bird range. Shearwaters. The wings which normally drive the birds. By the air. Drive them down six meters now. Through water. While the birds are. Pick up the shoal top. The underside is attacked by the dolphins. After 20 minutes of dinner. The rulers from the sea and from the air. Have their fill. Life stability on our planet relies on such links between various habitats. Evaporation of water from the sea surface condenses form big clouds. And finally they did release the rain from fresh water. But these rains of life they're not evenly distributed across the land. This huge pot of salt in Africa. Everything that remains of an old lake. It is completely waterless and oven hot. Few locations on the ground. They're more life hostile. Some tracks made by animals cross it. Searching for water unsuccessfully. But very sometimes. This entire landscape has been transformed. The salt pot is drained by a huge deluge, driven by a certain unknown signal. Minor flamingo flocks, thousands of kilometers away arrive. The algae fed by the flamingos have lain asleep in the dust as spores. Most important, however, here are the birds to breed. Perfect conditions could happen. Just in a decade once, on an island the birds nest far from shore. They build mud mounds. That raises your eggs. And so keep them cooler only marginally. They'd be at ground level than they would. The waters of the island. Is that salty? Predators are not venturing into it. The nests are therefore safe. 30 days later. Thousands of chicks are beginning to hatch. There is no shelter, however. The sparkling sun. The once surrounding water. Protecting their island. He's dried up completely now. The last hat. Step into a world that's desperately harsh. Either way, the growing chicks. Must find fresh drinking water. You can't fly yet, so you must walk. Some of the adults are guided. You may have to walk 50 kilometers. Some, unable to keep up. The salt has solidified its legs. Most of the pups, despite all this, and walking for days, reach fresh water eventually. It's the end of a long trip. But just the first tests. This is imposed on these flamingos by the rain irregularity. If precipitation is more predictable and sure, then life can thrive richer. Numbers and variety both. East Africa's Serengeti Plains. Over a million wildebeest support. The herds follow the rain of season. Grass on the new grass grass. That comes in their wake. Every year, within three weeks, the women give birth. More than a quarter of a million calves. This young man is only a couple of days old. Play strengthens your legs. For the long journey ahead of us. The calf must remain near his mother. Without her milk, it'd go hungry. 
and the herds travel always after the rains as they pass through the plains fresh grazing to find they eventually reach the forests hunting dogs calves of wild beasts are a favorite prey and the dogs are starving the calf has to remain with her mother inside the herd protected the dogs have unbelievable durability but the herd defends the calf they need the calf by themselves mom blocks the dogs shielding her calf it's running for security and it manages only get back to herd the future of all this migration depends on rainfall regularity but also on the continuation of life of the big open grasslands through which the sheep make your huge journeys in places where plenty of rain falls forests grow throughout the year and in the tropics warmth they are supporting an unrivaled wealth of life half of all kinds of animals on the ground live in this stable world in this stable world the pure diversity is amazing we have not yet cataloged all species living in the forests of the tropics the relations between all of them they're multiple and complex plants are often animal dependent their flowers to pollinate and these intimate links are equally important as the world's great ones these are traps flowers shaped like seals orchid produced each bucket is filled with red an oily fluid dripping from above male orchid bees require a rich fragrance to impress their women with and the orchids supply it however the seal is slippery and the fluid where the bee fell is sticky the only way out it's a narrow tunnel as it emerges the bee is tightened and that gives the plant enough time pollen bags on the bee's back so the orchids pollen take in another plant and the bee receives a perfume with which it recovers its strength. 